Good afternoon. Okay. So I'll just jump right in here. And how many of you are familiar with HeartMath? Just get a sense. Oh, wow. Most of you. Okay. Um, this is our mission statement for those of you that aren't uh, familiar with the HeartMath. But it's HeartMath from day one, which is about 28 years now, something like that, uh, is to help people bring their physical, mental, and emotional systems into balanced alignment with the heart's intuitive guidance. And we mean that literally, and I've done a lot of research about the heart as, as more than a pump and more than a metaphor as the real or the primary access point to that deeper part of ourselves, whatever we want to call it. Every culture has their name for it, soul, spirit, higher self, larger capacities. Um, and a growing body of evidence is starting to suggest that the poets and philosophers and religions have been right all along. The heart really is that. But anyway, by learning to follow the guidance of the heart unfolds the path for becoming heart-empowered individuals who choose the, the way of love, which is demonstrated through compassionate care for the well-being of themselves, others, and planet Earth. So I would say, actually, that care in that context is love in action, right? I mean, we have to finally get down and do things to, to help people and others and the planet. So it, our research and our perspectives are really divided into three broad categories. Personal, which has really been our focus really for the last 20-some years, developing tools, techniques, technologies that help people really align with that deeper part of themselves, better self-regulate, maintain their composure, these types of things. And, uh, um, so we've developed programs for the U.S. Navy, for example, law enforcement, many programs for schools and children and colleges. So a fairly broad um, thing there. And ultimately, it's always been about global coherence, but we'll never get to global coherence and alignment without social, right? So our, our past year really has been very focused on social coherence, developing new training programs and new technologies to help facilitate people getting along better, basically. So I want to, uh, part of that is a new technology platform. There we go. And its first public demonstration of this technology well, it just happened at Burning Man uh, last year. It was a very cool thing. Uh, we didn't build the four-story sculpture you see here or any of that. That was a, actually a heart math trainer. Uh, but the technology that underlies this um, was directly coming out of our, our new social coherence work. So I want to show you a quick video of uh, of this event, I think it's pretty cool. We need the sound. In this experience, you will each use your breath to enter a state of coherence or deep harmony with yourself, one another, and the universe. Please connect the heart math sensor to your earlobe. The sensor will measure your individual heart rhythms to determine your collective state of coherence. The deeper your state of collective coherence, the brighter I shine. Let's begin. And if you're, anybody's interested and wants to see the heart rhythm coherence technology that was shown there in Power, there's an exhibit out there that you can get hooked up and try it out. So today I want to really talk more about global coherence and some of the, the new research that we're finding there. So GCI is for short for the Global Coherence Initiative. This is a science-based project, project right? very close collaborative. We have collaborators around the world uh, that we're working with on this. And its ultimate goal is to really unite people in heart-focused care and intention to really 
uh, facilitate the shift in consciousness that's occurring. Uh, one from, I think, it's pretty clear, but it's pretty instable right now, uh, with all the polarities to one, of, you know, where we can really come together in the heart and, and uh, have some enduring peace. So we have three, or really four, high-level hypotheses, and then each study, of course, has its own under that. The first one is not really a hypothesis. This is lots and lots of data, hundreds of studies, uh, showing that we are affected both humans and animal, our, our, our health, but especially our cognitive functions, our emotions and our behaviors, are affected by the, the planetary energetic fields, magnetic fields that we are embedded in, that we live in. And then Earth and its magnetic field is embedded within that of the Sun, and those fields affect Earth and thus us, and so on. And some surprising findings coming out of this. The second hypothesis, I don't think this will sound that strange to, to those of you here, although some in the scientific community, this is pretty out there, and that is that the magnetic fields of the Earth are literally acting as the carrier wave of biologically relevant and patterned information. In other words, we're all connected to the Earth's magnetic field and coupled to it in biological information. So all living systems, if this is correct, are literally linked, not just metaphorically, okay, and sharing information. Thus, if that's true, we all affect the, what we call the global information field, or the global consciousness field, would be another way to think of that. And large numbers of people, if that's true, who are intentionally creating heart-centered states of care, love, compassion, and other types of kindness, and so on, that is feeding the field, that, those frequencies, that information. And that can really help offset the stress waves and benefit really all living systems within that larger field. And in fact, I'll, if we have time, I'll show you some data that suggests when we do that together, it amplifies the effect. So it's not just one plus one equals two. It's there's a, a nonlinear amplification. Now, the first, uh, I think this is fascinating data uh, from Alexander Chesovsky, who's really the first, kind of the father of the field of looking at these type of interactions. And he is a Russian astrophysicist who was grafted into World War I. So there he is in the middle of the war, but being an astrophysicist, he's kind of keeping an eye, one eye on the sun and what it's doing. And it appeared to him that when we had more solar activity, more solar storms and flares, that people down here on Earth just got stupid, basically. Okay? So this intrigued him. So after the war, he did an exhaustive study of human history. And it's really kind of amazing what some of these guys did back then, before internets and so on. So the next slide I'm going to show you is his original data. So in the blue line on top over here, we're starting in 1749. It's as far back as they, they had the, the certain kind of solar date on. And, and then it wraps around, you know, down here to 1926 when this was first published. What is being plotted in that blue line is there's a dot each year for the number of major human events that occurred that year. So these are big things, start of a war, revolutions, right? Major discoveries that had planetary uh, or global effects. The red line on the bottom panels is the solar cycle for the same time period. You think there might be a correlation there. I mean, it's amazing, right? And this has, of course, been confirmed by many, many researchers and brought into modern times. And we now know that there are many, many things riding that solar cycle in terms of human behavior. Another researcher later uh, after this went even farther back in history where they had uh, more data for solar cycles farther back in time through ice cores and so on, and found that the onset of war for 80% of the cases started in a very specific period right around the peak of the solar cycles, 80%. So that could sound like this is out to get us or something, right? No, it's not the case because during those same periods of increased solar energy are also the greatest periods of human flourishing. You need to really underline that and understand that. So I think of this as an energetic influx, literal energy when the, during the solar, period, solar cycles, which is a 10 and a half to 11 year cycle, there is literally more energy produced by the sun. You can measure it. That, you know, that affects the Earth in the Earth's magnetic systems, which, as we'll see, affects us. So it's, it's how do we use that energy? How mature are we? Right? If you're politicians and immature, you start wars. Right? I, was, I gave this presentation in a 
few years ago in Saudi Arabia, actually. Somebody in the audience stood up about this point and says, well, well, can't we just lock up all the politicians during that period, right? <laughs> Not a bad idea. <laughs> True story. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's the greatest periods of, of music, arts, science, always all flourish. So we either use that energy to invent new things, collaborate, work things out, or if we're not well-managed and self-regulated, right, get in squabbles and so on. So to do science, we have to measure things. So we've had to create um, a system to really listen in on the Earth. What is the Earth telling us? What are the rhythms and frequencies of the Earth? And that's called the Global Coherence Monitoring System. And this is a network, and it's the only one of its existence, and I wish we didn't have to do this ourselves. It's a lot of work and fairly expensive to do. But these are exquisitely sensitive, some of the most sensitive magnetometers in the world that are designed specifically to measure the magnetic rhythms and frequencies of Earth. And I'll explain what those are in a second. And we have them around the world. This is, the, the systems are not complete yet. We're about halfway there. So we have sites now in here, one in California. Uh, Canada, Boulder, um, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, New Zealand, and L Lithuania. This is what the site here in, uh, where, we, where I live in Boulder Creek looks like. The magnetometers are these long things about three feet underground. So one of the things we're measuring is the um, magnetic fields, as I kind of said. That this picture here is kind of this idealized picture of the, what's called geomagnetic field. We all know what that is, right? The North Pole, South Pole thing our compasses tune into. So remember back in probably junior high, somewhere along the way, in science class, and we got to dump iron filings on the glass plate, right? And you put the magnet under it, and, and they all magically show you the shape of the field. And, but they line up in lines, remember? It wasn't just kind of smooth thing. It's the, they line up in these lines. Those are called flux lines. That's what the white lines here represent. Those are real things. Now, what I'd like you to think of, is this is the way it literally is, of those flux lines, those magnetic field lines, think of them like guitar strings. And what happens when you pluck a guitar string or any stringed instrument? It vibrates, right? And depending upon how tight the string is, it has a resonant frequency, pitch, note, whatever you want to call it. But what's vibrating or what's plucking the strings of the earth is the solar wind rushing by. And these are called field line resonances. Pretty simple, field lines resonating. And this is actually fairly new data. This is from new, new satellites that uh, were just recently, about two years ago, launched. And what you're seeing here, the little dot in the center here, whoops, wrong one. How do I go back? There we go, oops. A little dot in the center, that's Earth. You know, Earth up there. So what we're seeing here, this is not some artist thing. This is actual real data from these satellites as we're seeing the ringing of the Earth's magnetic field, right? So the resonance of the, the field line resonances. And if we measure these on Earth, the first peak that you see there is 0 0.1 hertz. This is one of the primary resonant frequencies of the field line resonances of Earth. But they all overlap the human heart, cardiovascular system, and the rhythms in our nervous system. And I make this point because when we, one of our earlier work and heart coherence and heart-brain interaction found that this is a heart, this is a human heart rhythm of when somebody is in a loving state or appreciative state. Our heart rhythm beats out this very beautiful sine wave pattern, and the frequency of it is 0.1 hertz. It's not close. It's exactly the same as the resonant frequency of Earth. Us, Earth, right, the human heart. The story gets a little cooler. Because another set of magnetic frequencies we're looking at and our sensor sites are designed to measure are called Schumann resonances. A lot of people have heard of these. Fewer people know about field line resonances, even though they're much more, magnetically speaking, powerful. So Schumann resonances are the magnetic waves that get uh, trapped between the surface of the Earth and the bottom of the ionosphere, right? And there's eight of them. First one is 7.8 hertz. This is the frequencies of the, the eight, there's actually eight, the eight Schumann resonances. Well, these all overlap human brainwave frequencies. So Earth is singing away, if you will, 24-7, the same frequency as our heart, the powerful one, and our brainwaves, a little bit smaller magnetic. So I'm going to cut to kind of the uh, end story of a lot, not end story, but a, a long way, because there's a lot more in between here. But what we have been doing is recording groups of people 
their heart rate variability, heart rhythms over many weeks to months. And this is, I don't, as far as we know, never been done before. First question was to ask, well, can we see how these changes in the background magnetic field of the earth affect our nervous system? Because heart rate variability uh, reflects ner autonomic nervous system dynamics. And that's all there. We've got lots of great significant effects, all, all published if you're interested in that. But the surprise came when we time-synchronized this, this is the first group of individuals' data. Basically, just average their beat-to-beat -beat heart rate together. So you imagine, this is a little background here. This is a group of people who is spread out across the state of California. Some in southern, some in northern, some in central. It's not like they're in a room holding hands, meditating for 30 days. They're going about their normal lives. So what we found, the total surprise, whoops, I keep hitting that wrong button, is the, the blue line here is the group's averaged HRV. We expected it to be a noisy flat line, just all averaging out. It's not what you, you can see, it's not what happened. What this indicated was that this group of people's heart rhythms were literally synchronized to each other. Now, how could this possibly be, right? So, as it turns out, what explained it is the red line, and that is the power if you, in the resonant frequencies of Earth's magnetic field. So what we saw here was a pretty strong indication that humanity, right, I can say that now, was literally synchronizing to each other and to the Earth. Okay, so pretty profound, and all the colleagues I showed it to, you know, jaw-dropping, that kind of thing. But before we published this, we needed to kind of confirm this. I mean, California, Right, all those kind of things, you know, synchronized to the earth and all that. So we were able to uh, repeat this study. We were fortunate to get some, some funding on a much larger scale. So this was called the global, inter, uh, the global study, global HRV synchronization study. So here we've got groups in five countries, 20, pe 20 people in groups, so well over 100 people all around the world. And what we found here now we had a much bigger pool of people to pull from who all wore these recorders at the same time. And the group, see it be on your left, what, the black line there is the, the data from the earth. This is the Schumann resonance frequency in this case. And then the blue line is a subgroup that's pulled from all these groups around the world. So Lithuania, Saudi Arabia, right, um, New Zealand, California, England. And what we found was that there's basically three types of groups. One on the left, which is uh, synchronized together as a group, even though they're in radically different time zones in some cases from all these groups, and what's called positively correlated to the Earth's magnetic field data. The other group is also synchronized together as a group, but inversely correlated. So they're having exactly the opposite reaction to the same change in the Earth's in magnetic field data. Not saying one's good or bad, and we don't know why you're in which group. The third group wasn't synchronized to anything. Each other, other people, or the Earth's magnetic field. I suspect that is not the group you want to be in. Right? Now, I can't prove that. That'll be another research step. But there's a lot of uh, growing data that suggests that the fields of the Earth are literally an energy source for us literally, that we draw energy from it and use that in, in ways, like that energetic influx I was talking about. I don't have time to go into it today, but we're also seeing that from certain types of radiation from the sun. It's an energy source. When it's increased, we do better. We feel better, less symptoms and so on, and also from the cosmos. So these, these different levels of embeddedness and energetic influxes. So, now, uh, I mentioned this earlier. Um, when we are together in groups and we're in a coherent, heart coherent state and really, really feeling love, appreciation, compassion for others, that's what takes us into a heart coherent state, which increases the coupling to the earth's fields. That's the suggestion. And that that is amplified in groups. Now, from the same study of the international study, this is one group, this is true for all the groups. In the middle of this particular study, all of the groups, at the, we synchronized them to do what's called a heart lock-in. This is kind of a heart-focused meditation. 
that we know shifts you into this beautiful heart rhythm, coherent state, and you sustain it. And lots and lots of benefits from that personally, but all the group members did this together. And here's what we found. So this is the, the individuals in the group before, the, in the day before, and this is the day of and day after they did that exercise. What this graph is showing is the degree this is a, kind of a complex nonlinear analysis, but it's showing the degree of synchronization with each other and with the Earth's field, is what this analysis is. So if the line's going up, it means it's positively correlated. The line's going down, negatively correlated. So here they're all over the place. Look what happened after the heart lock-in. This is a day's worth of data. This, that one 15-minute exercise had measurable effects. It had a carryover effect for two days. So just really get it in that heart coherence together globally. And all the, all the groups globally looked almost exactly like this. I don't have time to show you that. So it's, we really are, the bottom line here, connected in a much deeper way than we ever previously imagined. I mean, how many times do we hear, well, on some level we're all connected. Yeah. <laughs> we really are, and we're now able to put some science to what those, at least one of those levels is, and then how information is shared across, globally across the fields. So this explains a lot of things once you think about it, like how mom knows her kid's upset or in trouble on the other side of the planet, right? I could go into more of that. Maybe next year we'll talk about that. So the moral of the story here is that it starts at the personal level, by us starting to take personal responsibility for what we're feeding the field, for our energy. You know, and as we work together to become more self-regulated, more coherent in our groups, that's moving us towards social coherence. And as enough groups around the world do that, eventually that moves to global coherence. Because it's putting out a stronger signal. So my parting thoughts was to, I would encourage you to think about what am I feeding the field? Right? Am I feeding the field love, compassion, kindness, care? Or maybe I'm feeding the field frustration, anxiety, irritation because I didn't get my to-do list, to list done soon enough. Great. Thank you for your, your attention. We can do some questions, actually. We are five minutes ahead of time. Again. We're, Let's do it. Yeah. I said I was no, out of time. It's not your fault. You're okay, perfect. I said I was out of time. You're good. Okay. You're, you're okay, awesome. I'm out of time. Anybody has a question? Yes. There we go. Can we get these out of my like, CPU? Oh, there. I'm delighted because I actually sat in your apparatus at Burning Man, so it's a pleasure to Oh, meet you were part you. of that. I wasn't there, but uh, great. <laughs> I sat Probably. there in those chairs, and I actually wondered. It was lovely. It was sort of vibrated, and, and then there was the earphones and something got attached. But I was actually secretly saying, okay, this is cool, but are those lights actually programmed? Is it following its own program? No, it's following you. But it was you. actually synchronized. And it was what, following you, and it was following the group. Because what was the nature of the, how did I know that it was synchronized? Because the lights in the system was beautiful, actually, yeah. but how, what showed the most synchronization? What would have indicated that? Yeah, so what that was actually doing, it, we, we provided all the software and the analysis for it. So you had the group, and it was the group's level of heart coherence that controlled the lights and the sound, not just an individual. Yeah. So, and so how did that, how, how do I know what was controlled, in other words? Because I saw lots of lights going yeah, on. Yeah, well, I, I can't tell you colors. what light was controlled by what oh. thing. They're going to share the code with us. That they, that they took our signals of the group's coherence and then mapped that to the light and the sound. I that was all Paul, that, Pablo's work. So. Yeah. Is that published somewhere? Um, actually, actually, I just published a paper on social coherence, not on the details of that, but on the, this project. Uh, in fact, if you want to go to heartmath.org, there's a thing called Research Library. It's got hundreds of papers in it, and that would be the top of the list because it was just published like a week ago. It's called social Co new, new Frontiers in Social Coherence, something like that. Thank you. No, but uh, one more very quickly. Yes, point. Okay, you choose. Point and I run. Okay. Uh, I saw you first, so I'm sorry. But, well, I'm going to be here. I'll, I'll, go, I'll be hanging out the booth for about an hour, so come talk. Have you looked at your studies in relationship to, to sun activity? Oh, yeah. And have you also um, done anything to consciously work so that the, you're not at the mercy of the sun activity? Uh, at the mercy of what? 
of that activity. Well, yeah, that's what the whole point in a way. Yeah, of course we look at solar activity. I kind of hinted, I didn't have time in 20 minutes, that there are certain solar radiations called the F107, it's a 2.8 gigahertz signal, that when the sun is increasing that, it's actually good for us. And it happens to be the same as, the, well, some people at least model the resonant frequency of DNA at that same frequency. Um, so when that's increased by the sun, we, we, it's another energetic in-source source that, again, if we're self-regulated, it does well. I mean, we, we respond well to it. But the whole point, really, of, of what, um, at least what heart math is about, is learning to better self-regulate, more stay aligned with our deeper heart and its intelligence. So that whatever the external environment is, we can maintain our internal ease and our internal, um, right, uh, composure. Whatever, whether you're in the middle of New York City and the hongs are going, or the suns, the magnetic fields are disturbed, it's all external stuff that we really can learn to maintain our centeredness with. <laughs>